Alright, I guess it's finally time to talk about the beta. I originally wasn't going to do this because I feel like I'm just going to be repeating what a lot of people have said already, but I've been getting a lot of comments asking for this, so I figured I would record this video, and who knows, maybe my opinions are slightly different from what other people are saying. You never know. So yeah, I don't have anything written down, I'm just going to be going off the top of my head. Uh, let's start with visibility. The overall visibility when you're not in a gunfight is actually not that bad. It's not too hard to spot enemies. Uh, there might be certain areas where the lighting is a little weird, where it can be really dark um, if you're going indoors. But overall, like seeing enemy players when you're not shooting is pretty good. Now, during the first weekend of the beta, the amount of muzzle flash and smoke when you fired your weapon was insane. Um, if you were shooting and the enemy was shooting at you, you could not see anything. They did tone that down in the second weekend of the beta, and it was a lot better. It's not perfect, but it's tolerable. I think it's fine. If they could reduce it even more, that'd be great. If not, I can get used to it. It's not that bad. Now, I want to quickly talk about visual recoil because there is a lot more visual recoil in this game compared to other FPS shooters. And a lot of people don't really understand what I'm talking about when I mention visual recoil. A lot of people think I'm complaining about the recoil of a gun. It's not that. I'm not talking about the actual recoil pattern or magnitude of recoil. Honestly, there's like no recoil on most of these weapons. Um, I'm not complaining about recoil. I actually wouldn't mind it if they gave all the guns more recoil. I think that'd be uh, pretty fun. But when I'm talking about visual recoil, I'm talking about the visual shake of your weapon when you fire your gun. Like your gun just has a lot of visual noise and it shakes a lot, especially if you use iron sights. Like the M4 with iron sights has insane visual recoil in this game. And I personally wouldn't mind it if they just toned down the visual recoil a little bit. It's just one of those things that does hurt visibility when you're in a gunfight. I know a lot of people will always make the argument for realism. Like people say that, oh, your gun should have a lot of muzzle flash and smoke and visual shakiness when you shoot your gun in real life. But in the end, this is a video game. This is a PvP arcade shooter. Certain things like visibility should always be more important than realism. Speaking of visibility, um, I don't know why they removed enemy nameplates. I don't think anybody ever complained about enemy nameplates. I personally would like if they added them back in, but for some reason, Infinity Ward seems to be very against it because they posted saying that they're going to find better ways for us to track enemy players other than using enemy nameplates. Again, I don't really understand why they're so against it. I mean, enemy nameplates have been in Call of Duty since as long as I could remember, to be honest. Back then, you needed Cold-Blooded Pro to not have the, uh, the red nameplate. And now everybody gets cold-blooded pro, I guess. Again, it's just a little thing that helps with visibility. Like, if somebody is prone on the ground, I actually just don't even know if it's a real person sometimes. But yeah, that's about it for visibility. Uh, just a quick recap. Muzzle flash, smoke, visual recoil. I would prefer if it was toned down a little bit. If not, it's whatever. It's not the end of the world. And I would prefer to have enemy nameplates again, just to help with overall visibility when you're tracking enemies or differentiating an enemy player from a teammate because your teammates blue dots still get in the way through walls. But moving on, footstep audio. Footstep audio is still too loud for multiplayer. I can sit in the middle of the map and literally sound whore both bomb sites if I want to. I think most people can agree that the footsteps are just way too loud and they should be toned down. Are they going to do it? Probably not. <laughs> okay, so the UI, the UI is dog shit. Probably the worst UI I've ever seen in Call of Duty or in any game. It's just not very intuitive. It's hard to navigate. There are so many times where I want to edit a class really quickly in between a search and destroy round, and I'm just like, I don't want to do it. It's just not worth it to go through it. They did say that they were like finding ways to improve it, but I highly doubt they can make any significant changes in one month. So this is probably what we're going to get. At the very least, they could probably just move things around, which could improve it. But overall, the UI just sucks. Uh, so the perk system. I know a lot of people are talking about the perk system. I think the new perk system is an unnecessary change, but it's not too bad for search and destroy. Like, I don't really care that much. I think if you play respawn, it's pretty annoying because you can't start with ghost. So if you join late, you're pretty much screwed. But for search and destroy, it's not too bad. I do wish that the charge time was reduced so you can get your perks a little bit faster. And I know Mark Spin talked about how Ghost should be a second tier perk, which I agree. I, I think it shouldn't be a third tier perk. If it stays as a third tier perk, then they definitely need to reduce the charge time so you can get it a little bit faster. Again, in Search and Destroy, it's more tolerable than it is in Respawn. So even if they don't make any changes, like I can figure it out. I usually have Danny in the back with an LMG ready to shoot down UAVs anyways. So it's not too big of a deal for me. 
So I guess I should talk about the actual gameplay and gunplay of the game and how that felt. I guess I could start with the movement. The movement overall is actually pretty good. I like that you can still attack, sprint, jump shot, bunny hop. You can still drop shot too. Drop shotting is not as good, uh, but you can still do it in most situations. I am perfectly okay with them removing slide cancelling. I know there are certain ways to do it, but I personally didn't do it in the beta because I wasn't sure if it was going to get fixed. In the actual release, if they still leave that glitch or exploit in, then maybe I'll start slide cancelling. But for the most part, I really did not need to slide cancel in this game. I think the only thing that really bothers me is just how much they nerfed the slide mechanic itself. When you slide in this game, it's not only quite slow, but you have to fully finish the animation. And it feels like you're stuck for the longest time, where you just can't get your gun up in time. So sliding around a corner or sliding into a gunfight is pretty useless. I feel like what they could have done is just remove the slide cancel mechanic, but still make the slide useful. If they just left the slide as it was in Modern Warfare 2019, I feel like that could have been pretty good. Because in Modern Warfare, during the first year, I actually did not slide cancel at all. I just didn't do it. But I was still able to slide fluidly into a gunfight. Like, it didn't feel like I was completely screwed. Honestly, when I think about it, in almost all the previous Call of Duties with sliding, you can still slide into a gunfight in ADS pretty quickly. But you just can't do that in this game. And they remove the slide cancel mechanic, so sliding is basically useless. Everybody just resorts to bunny hopping around corners, which is why you see me and like pretty much everybody else constantly just jump around because that's the only thing you can do. So yeah, the movement overall is pretty good, I just wish that sliding was a little bit more useful. Now it's time to talk about the Sentinels. <laughs> so Modern Warfare 2 definitely promotes a more campier playstyle. It's always more beneficial to ADS, pre-aim, and hold angles. A lot of that has to do with the footstep audio, like footstep audio is just way too loud so you're forced to ADS walk everywhere, people are afraid to move because if you move you get sound horde. You definitely can't be as aggressive as you could in Modern Warfare 2019 or Vanguard. I think if footstep audio was toned down it would definitely help with this. And also if they improved sprint to fire speeds across weapons because the sprint to fire speed is pretty bad right now. So again that just promotes players to always be ADS'd around a corner or just hold an angle. I think it's just something that we're going to have to deal with this year. Like, we're going to have to slow it down. You can't full send it. You got to play it slow, play it more tactical, I guess. You got to be a sentinel. Unless they actually reduce footstep audio, but uh, that is highly unlikely. Okay, you know what? There's more that I want to say about footstep audio and why I think they're not going to change it or tone it down. Here's the thing. The footstep audio is too loud for multiplayer right now, but it technically works for Warzone 2 and DMZ. In a battle royale or a looter shooter where, you know, things are more risky, there's only one, you only have one life, then yes, you want the best possible audio just to hear your enemies and make sure you just don't get snuck up on. I mean, that was a major complaint with Warzone. The footstep audio, it was so inconsistent where you just don't hear your enemies sometimes. And I don't know how the sound design works because even in Modern Warfare 2019, I always thought that the footstep audio was very loud in multiplayer but it didn't seem that loud for some reason in Warzone. I don't know if I'm explaining this properly. Like, everybody who plays Warzone wants more footstep audio. Everybody complained about that. There's no audio, which is why I think with Warzone 2 and DMZ coming out, they really wanted to get the best footstep audio possible for those game modes, because I think those are the two game modes that they're going to be focusing on this year. So, with that being said, that level of footstep audio that they want to achieve in Warzone 2 and DMZ just doesn't work in multiplayer that well. Unless they're able to have separate audio designs or sound designs for each game. Because here's what I think. If they reduce the footstep audio in multiplayer, let's say if they reduced it quite a bit. If that same sound design is put into Warzone 2 or DMZ, people are going to complain. People are definitely going to complain that the footstep audio is too quiet in Warzone 2 and DMZ. And that makes sense, in my opinion, because again, in those game modes, you want to have the best audio possible to hear where your enemies are coming from. If you've played Apex or PUBG, I didn't really play too much Tarkov, but or the Cycle. I, the sound horning is very good. It's so good in those games, and it needs to be good. But I think that level of footstep audio just does not work in multiplayer. And since Warzone 2 and DMZ are probably going to be their primary focus this year, that takes priority. So they're going to leave the footstep audio as it is. That's my prediction or my opinion on that. I, I don't know. I don't know if I explained it properly, but that's what I have to say on footstep audio. Okay, enough with that. Let's go back to talking about... What the fuck was I talking about? 
I was talking about the gameplay and the gunplay. Oh yeah, um... I, I can't really say much on weapon balancing in the beta because we only had like a couple weapons and half of them you couldn't even unlock attachments. The scar was definitely very, very good. I mean, first of all, the guns all feel and sound great, by the way. I know a lot of people really care about that, but they are very punchy. They sound great. I do like that you can rank up guns pretty quickly and unlocking attachments is pretty cool as well. That whole gunsmith system is pretty solid. The time to kill in the beta was a little weird. I think if you actually calculate it, it's not that much faster than it was in Modern Warfare 2019. It's about the same, I think. Like when you're shooting at someone, the time to kill feels pretty solid. But for some reason, when you die, it feels like you die in one to two shots. So I think there might be an issue with the net code or the server. I don't really know. For some reason, it always felt like the enemies killed you in like one or two bullets. But you don't get that same time to kill when you're shooting at someone. So I don't know what that's about. Ooh, I almost forgot. They nerfed Dead Silence very heavily in this game. Um, I'm okay with the animation, but for some reason when you activate it, there's an activation noise. And that lasts like three seconds. It's like a three second ping or like a ringing sound that just lets your enemies know exactly where you are. That is dumb as fuck. All right, that just defeats the purpose of Dead Silence and why you would want to pop it. That activation sound needs to go. Uh, what else, what else, what else? The maps. The maps were pretty good for Search and Destroy. Uh, the hotel one was great. Um, Mercado was really good as well. Farm isn't that great, but I think I've learned to play it a little bit better. You really just have to play the objective usually. Museum was pretty bad for Search and Destroy actually, but not because of the size of the map. I think it was because B-Bomb was too difficult to access. Like if you lost it, like it's so hard to retake it over. It kind of reminds me of Petrograd A-Bomb, but even on Petrograd, there were so many different ways that you could re-challenge A-Bomb if you lost it. But overall, yeah, I think the maps were okay. They definitely play a lot better in Search and Destroy. I just did not enjoy my time on a respawn at all in this game. And I guess this ties into the next thing that I wanted to mention, uh, the minimap. A lot of people want the uh, the red dots back on the minimap when you fire your weapon or when you fire an unsilenced weapon. And I would agree. I think that would be pretty good for the game. Again, I play mainly Search and Destroy, so it's not too big of a deal for me. Like, I got so used to playing s and in Modern Warfare 2019 without red dots on the minimap that, you know, it never really bothered me. But I feel like if you play Respawn, like, you need red dots on the minimap when people fire their guns or else it's just super slow. But regardless, I don't think they're going to make any changes to that. I think they've made it very clear. They don't want to punish people for shooting their guns. You got to make sure those sentinels stay hidden. So yeah, I think I covered most things. Overall, I did enjoy my time on the beta. I think Search and Destroy is a lot of fun. Is it better than Modern Warfare 2019? Mm, I can't really say. I'm definitely not playing Modern Warfare 2019 for another year because there's literally no content to make. Like, there's nothing to do. Even if the views suck on Modern Warfare 2, like, I'm still going to upload it because I'll have something to upload and play. Now, I know a lot of you are going to ask me, like, oh, is Modern Warfare 2 worth it? Should I get it? Should I pre-order it? I mean, there's really no point in pre-ordering it now because the beta is already over, but it's really up to you. It's really up to you. You can wait for the game to actually just come out, you know, watch some videos, watch some streams and make your decision then. Um, but for the most part, I think if you enjoy Search and Destroy, which I know a lot of my viewers do, then I think you're going to enjoy the game. If you're a big respawn player, though, maybe not. Maybe not. I could be wrong, though. I'm not a big respawn player, so I can't really say much on that. I still have a little bit of Modern Warfare 2 beta footage saved up, so you might see a couple more videos on that, and then I'll probably just be playing Modern Warfare 2019 for one more month. Alright, I'll talk to you guys later, and bye-bye.